Okay, let's get started here. Welcome. My name is Mary Charlson, and I'm making this pre recorded session for Elder College to be able to give you a link to this after you've viewed it live. So, good morning. Uh, this morning, I'm going to take you somewhere hot, sunny, and warm. Um, a nice reprieve from a, a cooler, October day, although we have had some pretty spectacular weather of late. I'm anticipating it being cooler by the time we watch this, but who knows, it might still feel like summer. My name is Mary Charlson, and I am a marketing and media thought leader, um, president of Charlson Communications, CEO of 5minutemarketing.com, and of course, founder of carryonqueen.com. During past Elder College presentations, uh, the Carry On Queen has taken you globe trotting in person and online. Uh, what adventures that we have had. I took a look at my calendar and we went hiking in Machu Picchu in Peru in 2018, and that was a face to face presentation. We went hiking in Italy's Dolomites in 2019, again, a face to face. And then we went online, motorbike, well, we did, we went motorbiking on Route 66 in the Grand Canyon. And that was a presentation which I did for you online in 2020. We went surfing in Western Australia in 2021, again, in an online presentation. And here we are again, now in 2022, and we're off to Belize. Now, Belize is a, a small, um, it's kind of small in size, but vast in cultural and biological diversity, uh, offering everything from hammocks on sandy beaches and tropical breezes to the second largest barrier reef in the world, second only to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Um, it's definitely worthy of your consideration. Uh, it's been some time since the decline of the great Maya civilization and the colonial conquests of the Spanish and the British kind of flexing their might on the shores of Belize. Uh, but it is a country which has gained independence in 1981 and then within 20 years began really modeling an approach to ecotourism similar to what they've done in Costa Rica. Uh, with the currency tied to the US dollar, which is also readily accepted, plus a stable democratic government and English speaking population, it's an appealing destination in the middle of South America. We were in Belize to take part in a kayaking adventure with Island Expeditions. Uh, Island Expeditions, um, Belize kayaking adventure was being surrounded, you know, the, the fun of it was being surrounded by fun, active people partaking in daily activities in a new environment, uh, while not having to organize a thing, which was beautiful, including meals. And that was a real bonus for us as a group of mums. This was a girlfriend getaway. It was a trip originally planned <clears throat> for April 2020, which we all know how that worked out. Um, so many of the gals were from our hockey team, the Stanley Cupcakes, but we gathered a few other girls as well in the remixed version uh, in 2022. But first up, as the Carry On Queen, uh, we need to pack. <laughs> My motto is always pack light and experience more. Uh, yep, I take only one bag when I travel, and it is a carry on. And as you'll see, even that got downsized going out to the island. Here's the summer. You can basically pretty much get by with a bikini, with a bikini and a sarong. Although there are a few other essentials, but uh, it's a pretty light type of uh, type of packing affair. Now, summer camp for adults, you know, some people, we, we drew a lot of parallels here. Um, you know, it's based on more than just kind of the multitude of activities like kayaking and snorkeling and sailing and paddleboarding, fishing, and, you know, interpretive hikes led by guides. Um, you know, we, we joked we felt like kids at camp because the counselors were constantly planning the next activity to kind of wear us out. Then they would feed us and then they do it all over again in the afternoon, sometimes with uh, hammock time to relax as well. But instead of cabins in the bush, we had off-grid glamping tents, which were waterproof and screened, each privately placed on white sandy beach in our nearly deserted Southwater Key on Glover's Reef. With group dining, fresh prepared chef meals, including the catch of the day, social conversation with other globe travelers, you know, plus free, you know, free flowing adult beverages at happy hour. It was hardly the canteen dining hall memory of summer camp though. 
Uh, since fresh water was precious on South Water Key, showers were light and uh, makeup was essentially non-existent, which was good. Um, so we had kind of what we called the gone feral look, um, you know, but that didn't stop us uh, from rocking a sundress at happy hour, assembled on the deck overlooking a Caribbean sunset uh, each evening. And of course, uh, there was a fine selection of hammocks strategically placed between palms and the opportunity to unplug. There was no Wi-Fi on the island and there was a generator which uh, ran only between five and eight to be able to recharge devices. So it was really kind of an ideal getaway that way. Uh, yurt style tents on platforms with screened windows and doors uh, and a fold down waterproof covers uh, with, with real bread, real beds and linens. This is kind of a, a look from inside the tent out uh, across the uh, the sand and into the ocean. You know, Club Med, hardly. Um, it's certainly not for the five-star resort crowd, but for those with a sense of adventure, uh, craving a unique experience away from over tourism, you know, island expeditions, Billy's kayak adventure might be just the anecdote you're looking for in a post-COVID travel era. Uh, you don't even need to be particularly good at kayaking, really, because they use doubles. And so if you're reasonably fit and open to new experiences, uh, that will suffice. Here's just another view from inside the tent, uh, looking over into the other, you can see some of the other tents over there along the beach. So basically, you're in good hands. And this was us kind of packing our bags, kind of repacking our bags at Dangriga uh, for the boat trip over. Island Expeditions comes with some solid credibility in the adventure tourism space. It was, they began running tours in Belize since, um, you know, since 1987, when the founder, a uh, guy by the name of Tim Boys, uh, was a UBC student and a kayaking guide, and he went looking for warm, warmer weather area to be able uh, to go for his all-season adventures. Um, you know, Belize was just beginning to kind of stake their claim as an independent country then, and no, no longer sort of tied to British rule. And they were really eyeing the whole ecotourism to attract travelers. And so that's really when, when they, the company started and, um, and they've been running ever since. So as you can see, we, we disembark here, getting ready to go out in the boat, repacked, had an opportunity to put things into dry bags uh, for the boat dried over. Um, but essentially after arriving in Belize City, Guests fly down to Dangriga, uh, further down the island, so that you're close by for the departure point for an early morning uh, boat out to the islands. Um, so day one was in Dangriga area and the um, Bakawina Rainforest Reserve. So while we were there, we did a hike out to the, uh, the waterfalls uh, at the rainforest uh, and stayed in the cabins that night. Uh, if you've never heard howler monkeys at night, it was uh, quite something uh, to, to really be in the middle of a, of a tropical rainforest. So early morning de boat departure was the next day. Uh, the boat ride out to the distant Southwater Quay is where we were going. It's open boat. So uh, bags were stored up front uh, undercover, but you can still get wet in the heavy seas. As you can see here, um, we were all battened down in our life jackets. Uh, we had departed um, when somebody spotted a lady waving from the shore, kind of wading out with her suitcase over her head. And uh, then somebody else said, that's the cook. <laughs> and so lesson number one, uh, never take a bunch of soon to be hungry, uh, happy campers out to a distant island and leave the cook on shore. So we, were, we all kind of had a good joke about that one. So Belize is a small country uh, with a very big offshore asset, which is a huge, huge barrier reef. It's 900 kilometers long area, kind of harboring lots of islets, islands, and more atolls than anywhere else in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, the boat trip out to Southwater Key on Glover's Reef took an hour, uh, and at times the seas were a little rough, and so we arrived, you know, a little, a little damp and a little salty, but otherwise smiling at the sight of the tropical paradise that we would call home uh, for the next three days. Uh, Steve was the camp manager and a uh, bit of a misplaced prairie boy from Winnipeg. Uh, he greeted us along with Mario and Byron, a couple of local guys who would be our, 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 our guides for the trip. So Southwater Key is an off-grid island uh, peppered with tent cabins on platforms and outstation buildings housing the washroom, the dining hall, and the kitchen. Um, after a brief tour around and unpacking and a, and a short break, it was off to be fitted with snorkel and fins and masks. Uh, then we had lunch, and then there was an orientation on the stand-up paddleboards, 
and an afternoon paddle. So we were right out of the right out of the gate and doing activity. Uh, while drifting over coral reefs and white sand just offshore, we could see numerous fish and rays and the shallow waters. You know, with sunsets at 6 p.m. daily, because remember that it's, you know, they're closer to the equator. Uh, happy hour before that and dinner to follow, our days unfolded in an easy rhythm of activities and meals. This is a bit of a look at the orientation, kind of our, our camp counselors uh, and other guests. As you can see here, um, you know, we were our group, but there was other groups there as or other people there as well. And we all got to intermix. And it was kind of this kind of like the camp kind of experience in the dining hall. So a quick lunch before our first activity and setting out uh, into our tents. Uh, here was a little bit of uh, Byron uh, and, uh, and crew kind of getting us set up with our mask, snorkel and fins. And uh, this is one of our gals, Lisa, relaxing by her tent. So you can see there was a platform there. We had our chairs. It was really quite delightful. Um, however, you know, Belize can deliver a mix of humid heat and sunshine, and, as well as tropical storms. And so our first night was a little wild <laughs> with big winds and rain, but by the morning it was all sunshine. Uh, the tents on platforms held up exceptionally well uh, with their roll down Velcro windows, as you can see here, these are all rolled down on both inside and outside, which really uh, withstood a real pounding by a tropical storm. Um, day three activities were planned by our guard, our guides, Mario and Byron, and it took uh, into consideration the weather each day. So, you know, they would take a look at, uh, at the weather, the waves, the temperature, you know, various things uh, and decide, you know, what conditions uh, were best for different activities. So on this day, um, we did a morning snorkel out to the reef uh, and then followed another rain shower at lunch. It was off uh, for a paddleboard and then another snorkel. As you can see here, um, you know, here's some of us kind of coming back on the paddle boards. Uh, what, uh, what the guys did was they linked our boards together and towed them out to Glover's Reef Ranger Station. And then we paddled back. So we had the predominant kind of wind at our back, um, which was nice. Uh, uh, and then you know, we, uh, we had an opportunity to do some snorkeling off the reef. And uh, the guys introduced us some, some you know, things around uh, understanding the various fish habitat and the coral. Um, you know, and it was just at times it was almost overwhelming to take the sea life in. Um, you know, it's just almost like swimming in an aquarium all the time. Um, even close to shore access by paddleboard snorkeling at Glover's Reef was absolutely world class. Uh, you literally feel like you are in an aquarium. On day four, um, since the seas were a little bit rough for kayaking and boarding, uh, we decided to go out fishing after breakfast. So fishing Belize style is an impressive simplification of gear. Uh, they use only a line with a hook wrapped around a, a foam ball, and then our guides baited those hooks with a sliced mussel from a conch shell. Uh, the goal was to catch small fish, it's kind of the stepped process, catch a small fish to later use as bait when trolling for barracuda. Um, some of our group uh, were better at bobbing than others, uh, but once snagged, the fish uh, were hauled in by hand. Uh, most of the fish we caught were gray snapper, uh, but there were a few larger trigger fish um, that we let, were able to kind of keep and eat. Here's an example of one of the smaller fish uh, that we then you know, use some of those to, to bait for barracuda. And here's the larger barracuda. Uh, later with a heavier line on a circular handheld disc uh, that was brought out and had fairly sizable hooks uh, used to catch the barracuda. Um, a bit of an upgrade of the previous gear, but still very much a simplification uh, and not a rod in sight. Um, Mario baited the hook with fish, and then we trolled uh, for barracuda, taking turns off the back of the boat with, uh, with two people, two hooks down. Uh, after several kind of 15 minute shifts, our group caught two barracuda, uh, which were then cooked by the chefs for a meal that evening that was shared by all. The whole adrenaline rush of hauling a, a bear line with hands and a sizable fish was pretty remarkable. And, you know, everyone sort of saying, reel it in. <laughs> it was a pretty thrilling experience. Of course, we were grateful for the gloves uh, with those things and um, paused for a bit of a product shot. Uh, one of the gals was a marketing director at Watson Gloves. So, of course, uh, we had some product shots along the way. Uh, here was us posing at the dock at the end of it all with the catch of the day. So as you can see, we caught a couple of barracuda and a couple other keepers that were big enough uh, to bring back to the chefs. And of course, they prepared the fresh cut uh, caught fish uh, and the whole group enjoyed uh, the dining that evening. Uh, the wind gods were in our favor for a full day adventure of sailing and kayaking off to, 
off um, from Tobacco Cay towards uh, the mangroves uh, one of these days. It was an intensely hot day, so we you know, were slathered in sunscreen. Now, I've, I realized that this photo kind of jumped ahead here. We weren't actually at Tobacco Cay. We we're still at Southwater Key. Um, but this photo um, I was very typical of our experience at Southwater Key. Uh, the sailing uh, was on a broad reach and a downwind run, um, and at times it was wavy uh, with, you know, a good blow. So it wasn't unexpected when one of our group kayaks capsized. Uh, fortunately, the crew reassembled um, and without too much trauma, thankfully, uh, it was also a very warm tropical water. Um, and in the afternoon, we kayak and snorkeled on the reef uh, out to the Glover's uh, ranger station. And because this frontal system appeared to have cleared by then and the sunlight uh, on the reef really made the snorkeling spectacular, um, uh, even more so than in the previous days. I mentioned the sunsets, uh, sunset happy hour, we'd gather at night, you know, by the surf break. Uh, sometimes groups would do a night snorkel um, evening if the conditions weren't too rough. Um, it was really interesting to sort of see uh, the sea life at night, but unfortunately it was also, you know, a little bit of a tragic reminder of how many plastics are discarded in the ocean. Uh, once we were able to get out beyond the sea break, we could see where some of this stuff was caught. So even in Belize, you know, it's a progressive stance on recycling, but they're still battling a shameful waste culture uh, offshore, in particular with some of the boaters. Here's an example of the, you know, the happy hour on the deck. It was a great place to gather and chat about the day's activities uh, with your group or with other uh, members of the group. Day five, I mean, here's the classic iconic shot. You know, we had a short activity in the morning, snorkeling by paddleboard uh, on reef just out from Southwater Key. Uh, and then we departed uh, at 11.30 for Tobacco Key, our second base camp. And so it was uh, some of the best snorkeling of the trip. And that was the really unique thing about this trip is that we had two kind of base camps and then did activities from those. As you can see here, the color, the, the coral range from purple to red to yellow, you know, with, you know, textures of kind of wispy, kind of to intricate and solid. Um, you know, for the full experience, I have a video coming up, which I'm going to show you. You can see here just the amazing colors of fish and coral. It was uh, outstanding. So let's, let's go with the video here and you'll get a sense of it. Use an underwater camera for this, obviously, which uh, I would advise taking something if you really want to be able to record this type of thing. It's just, it was spectacular, spectacular snorkeling, just below the surface, just amazing. And watch for this, what's coming up. Beautiful ray that came right out of nowhere.
So it's just a, a video which um, I've embedded in the blog post that I did about this, but also it's over on my Carry On Queen YouTube channel as well. So directional signs off, or offer kind of amusing distances. Uh, obviously, Vancouver with, was one that caught, captured our attention, but uh, others as well. It was quite, uh, quite fun. So then it was off to Tobacco K. Um, after our early lunch, we packed our tents, uh, packed up from the tents, I should say. Tents stayed there. We got in the boat, and it was off for a 40-minute boat ride to Tobacco K, which is a little closer to the mainland. So it Tobacco Cay proudly welcomes guests with a welcome to paradise sign at the dock. And as you approach, you see all these colored cabins overhanging the water, kind of iconic. Um, you know, initially they were dotted on the horizon. And then, uh, you know, as we came in closer, it was uh, quite spectacular. Um, it's, well, it's a small island. Uh, Tobacco Cay does have a lot more people, including some local residents that live year round on the island and other travelers, as well as crew from private yachts that can stop by ashore for a drink or, you know, one of the two bars on the island. So it definitely has much more of a populated feel. That having been said, it still is a remote island. Uh, the cabins were a step up from tents uh, with electricity and uh, ensuite bathrooms. And I should say back at Southwater Key, we did have like little lanterns that they gave us and we had headlamps and stuff like that. So it was all and ran in lights by generator. But once we were over here, it was a little bit, a little bit of a step up. Um, you know, some of our group did an afternoon snorkel that day, but I elected to take a break in the hammock, uh, swinging on the porch over the ocean. Uh, our group booked all the overwater cabins, uh, and this was all part of arrangements which were made by Island Expeditions. Um, still accompanied by our guides, Mario and Byron, uh, we were introduced to some new cooks uh, who had prepared, would be preparing meals for our group on this island. Uh, well, it can hardly be described as upscale when your feet are dangling in the sand uh, in an open air bar. It was still without, you know, we're still without makeup and we uh, did enjoy both the sunset bar and the reefs and lodge uh, at the far end on our modest, um, you know, early evening pub crawl uh, of sorts uh, before hanging out at our cabins overhanging the ocean. Uh, here's just an example of one of our pub crawl stops there as the sun was setting uh, and then further along to the next sunset bar. So it was kind of fun. Uh, the next day it was off uh, for more kayaking um, after initially uh, using our sail rigs on a downwinder. Uh, we anchored our kayaks to snorkel through the mangroves, which is kind of fun. So we're wearing life jackets for flotation and no fins to kind of limit the disruption of the ecosystem. It was interesting, but you know, a little bit creepy, uh, you know, to see where lots of the sea creatures begin their life in protected areas. Uh, we learned the importance of mangroves, you know, beyond sustaining early sea life and how they're really instrumental in shoring up the islands, preventing erosion and creating new land masses over time. Uh, maintaining the mangroves and preventing development, uh, you know, usually, you know, fueled by tourism is an ongoing battle in Belize. Um, and we were later informed that there's crocodiles that also reside in the mangroves, which um, we are reassured that they were females and they weren't dangerous, but still left you a little bit kind of feeling a bit weird about it uh, but we we're all assured it was very very safe where we were anyway <laughs> uh, later we kayaked and sailed toward what they call bird island which um, you know a bunch of uh, these frigate birds migrated uh, there after the original habitat was disrupted by development uh, so these bushes are dotted with birds meow many of them male and all puffed up with like kind of red balloon style throats I've got a photo of it coming up in a second, all vying for the mating attention of females. Um, we had broken off uh, dead twigs in the mangroves to toss up in the air for them to retrieve in the building of their nests. Um, en route, uh, we also saw Marie Sharp's island. Um, Marie Sharp is, uh, you know, of the hot sauce. She's the hot sauce queen. It's a rather humble existence and summer getaway for a pretty successful business legend uh, in that hot sauce market, uh, which has gone international. Here's an example of those frigate birds with that, that puffed up red chest that I, that I mentioned here, trying to attract the females. Uh, the wind gods uh, were in our favor for the return with a rare uh, kind of easterly, which allowed us to point slightly upwind uh, to round the point towards Tobacco Key again. Um, shallow waters allowed for a pit stop midway to have lunch, you know, while our guides then packed away the sails and then it was a full on paddle. Uh, into the wind for the return to Tobacco Cay. And to be honest, uh, the sailing had been fun, but it was great to get some exercise uh, that the paddling demanded. 
And of course, then after getting cleaned up on shore, uh, we were happy uh, to have another happy hour sunset uh, at both bars again prior to a late dinner that evening. Um, day seven, uh, we had an early breakfast at 8 a.m. and then departed uh, for Dengriga. Uh, this is kind of a, a sunrise uh, out of our cabin. Um, a few of the group elected to go out and do a bit of a sunrise snorkel. Um, but by then, I was thoroughly, thoroughly infatuated with that that <laughs> that hammock on our deck. And so I had a, a very peaceful and beautiful Caribbean sunrise in the hammock. Uh, it was uh, it was it was glorious. Our group and guides at the dock for departure, uh, just as we were leaving uh, Tobacco Cave. And this is uh, just the departing. It gives you a sense of you know, the boat leaving, uh, leaving the dock. And as we saw the, the cabins that we've been staying at uh, for the last several days. We were in the orange cabin. So island expeditions dropped us back at the docks in Dangriga and ensured um, you know, our check-in at the Pelican Resort uh, Hotel. You can see it's aptly named Pelican Resort with all the pelicans sitting out on the dock. Um, so once we were sorted, we hired a cab and went back into Dangriga, hit the market to pick up a few items to take home, like Marie's hot sauce, um, which uh, some of us had become quite addicted to at that stage. And a couple of us also bought some hammocks, and you can guess. Yes, I was one of those as well. Uh, then we spent the balance of the day swimming in the ocean and relaxing in and out of the sun. Um, the heat and humidity was, was you know, pretty pretty intense and it was feeling our orders for cool drinks at the bar which is all quite fun but it was a lovely way to kind of relax and wind down in preparation for the departure flight the following day so after dinner our server arranged for us you know to experience uh, Garifuna, uh drumming at one of the local open air restaurant clubs in, in town um Dengrigi is known for its culture of drumming um so it was a very unique um eye into the sort of the local dance scene and music scene um, with two singers kind of vocalizing a chant to the rhythm, there's three drummers took different roles as bass, accompaniment, and lead. Kind of like a jazz, right? It's a very improvised approach to composition, especially when the new drummers kind of appeared out of the audience and then took over the lead rhythms while the rest of the group adapted on the fly. Um, I think I've got a little bit coming up here. Um, here's a bit of a video of some of the drumming. I'll just give you a sample. Right? Right. It kind of got into rhythm, very, it sounds chaotic right here, but it kind of adapted, right? It's very much meant some singing over it. It's kind of, right? kind of, kind of a, kind of a, of a cool kind of experience. Um, the flight from Dangriga back to Belize uh, was uh, the next day. And then in Belize City is where we then caught our international departure. Um, two other recommended side trips, uh, either before or after your off-grid island experience, uh, would be uh, Cake Hawker, um, which I'm going to show you a little bit about now. We did it for three days before, and I think before is actually a really nice way to do it because, you know, you're kind of getting into island life, but it's still very much populated. Then you're going offshore into your, your real off-grid experience. Um, we did the water taxi. We came in early. So we did the water taxi from Belay City to the waterfront docks and then the water taxi over to Cake Hawker. But you can also take a hopper flight from the airport and go directly to Cake Hawker that way as well. We just wanted to sort of see it uh, from the see a bit of the city and then see it from the water. Uh, the next video is kind of summarizing some of the things that you can see and do while on Cake Hawker. Everybody gets around by golf carts, bikes, or foot. There's no cars on the island. This 
split is an area which has actually divided the island uh, in, a, in a storm a uh, number, um, number of years ago. And so you can actually take the ferry, bike ferry, and go over and explore the North Island. North Island is much le less populated than the South Island. I don't know how long that will last, but um, there certainly are, there is certainly development which is starting there. We didn't actually see that, I just stuck that in because we were told they were there. So I thought that would be kind of, you know, the shock and awe value. <laughs> You can fish, you can snorkel trips from there. Of course, you can see some of these photos were taken from our experience at uh, South Water Key, but you can do day trips from Cape Cod to there. And going out to the Blue Hole is a full day if you go by boat, but you can do it by, by plane. I'm going to show you a little bit about that just coming up. So hopefully that uh, teases you a little bit of some of the things that you can do if you choose to go in early and stay at Cake Hawker. As I mentioned to you, you know, while at Cake Hawker, I'd recommend that you arrange a side trip to go see the Great Blue Hole. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, if you're a diver, of course, you know, going out and diving in it would be appropriate. Uh, we elected to do a flyover. Um, and we did a private charter with the five of us, uh, which was about the same as a group flight in terms of cost. But we then were able to arrange it to have the pilot drop us at Dangriga at the end, uh, where we then met up with the rest of our island expeditions tour group. So we did it, we kind of arranged it privately, because we were, you know, we had to we didn't want to go back to Cake Hawker and then have to come back down the island. So we just did it all as a private flight. So the next up is a bit of a fun video showing you the experience of flying over the Blue Hole. NAR pilot. Hmm. So it's taking off from the Cape Hawker.
came and he got to finally see a smiling face because of course he was wearing a mask um, in early 2022 uh, with the post-pandemic time. So, some tips. Um, the island expeditions or island um, uh, expeditions uh, offers, you know, different destinations uh, on their various trips. Um, you know, since ours was an eight day trip, uh, several of us elected to fly in early and arrange a, our own pre-trip out on. Uh, we, we got an Airbnb uh, for three days in Cape Cocker, which is a great way to kind of extend our trip. Um, so Island Expeditions um, website, Maya, Air, as well as Tropic Air, um, uh, those are some resources which I will share with you uh, in the actual presentation, but you can just simply Google them um, in terms of you know, the company. I, again, it was islandexpeditions.com and then both Maya, uh, islandair.com and tropicair.com are the companies that, uh, that do the charter flights or the pre-booked tourist flights. Uh, if you want to go up to the islands or see the blue hole. I'm a huge fan of the Lonely Planet guides and that's what we uh, we used for for checking out and, and looking at a number of things to see and do there. Um, I use the 2019 version, which was the seventh edition, uh, but apparently there is an eighth edition just out. It was published in May 2022. And I think that would probably be quite uh, helpful because it would have some post pandemic updates. Um, so get to the outer islands for a true off-grid experience. I think, you know, going out to South Order Key was, was just, just magical. And um, I think the further you're able to kind of get from all of that development and, and people, uh, the more you'll experience sort of, sort of the true charm of Belize. Um, a couple of things in terms of packing essentials, a headlamp. Now this is for, certainly for the off-grid, right? Um, we were given lanterns, but having a headlamp for a private headlamp to be able to go you know, to the washroom if you want to go at night or, or walking around. Water shoes for sure, uh, because you know, uh, certainly when you're snorkeling to be able to kind of, you know, so you didn't step on coral and just for getting in and out of the kayaks, they were very useful. Obviously a sun hat and sunglasses were absolutely essential. It's pretty intense heat and sunshine. Uh, you know, having the floating kind of peeper keepers for your sunglasses, uh, really, really good thing as well in case those glasses got knocked off your head. Of course, a water bottle was absolutely essential. Again, they had lots of fresh water that we could refill our bottles at South Water Key as well as Tobacco Key. But having your own personal water bottle was was super, um, super necessary. And also having it with a little carabiner on it so you could attach it to things would be super helpful as well. Um, sunscreen, yes. But if you can get reef friendly sunscreen, better. Um, and just because, you know, just as they're so... Uh, they're so conscious um, of sustainable practices there that I think that that really sort of honors what they're trying to do. A uh, quick dry towel is a good thing to have. Um, and, you know, it, or another, you know, maybe two small towels. So you have kind of a fresh water and a salt water towel if that's what you want. But a quick dry towel, because as soon as you hung them out on the line at the end, you know, the afternoon, like, you know, honestly, the sun and the wind, they were like dry within minutes. Um, a strong was super helpful, again, like as a second kind of towel, but also just as kind of a wrap for around a bathing suit. Um, you know, it was just a very versatile thing to have at least for the ladies. Uh, waterproof camera. Um, and so there's two things there. I, I took an actual waterproof kind of like a GoPro, but I also took a, um, a waterproof uh, protector for my cell phone. Uh, so that if you did want to take photos on your cell phone, when you're out on the paddle boards or whatnot, at least you knew that you had a protection there. Uh, a waterproof backpack, they do give you uh, waterproof kind of bags, uh, but I found it really helpful to have my own additional waterproof backpack, just to be able to like things like my cell phone, just like little things that if I wanted to stuff it inside or have easy access um, so that it wasn't just stuffed away in the kayak and only accessible when we, we pulled all that stuff out. Um, Belize weather is hot year round. As you can see here, the temperature kind of, you know, uh, maximum temperature kind of varies between 20 and, you know, a little over 30. Minimum temperature really kind of, you know, stays in that real moderate kind of zone. Um, it is a, a climate of wet and dry season, though, uh, meaning that there can be storms in the wet season. So generally tours are booked January to April, because as you can see, that's less, uh, less frontal systems kind of coming in there for the nicest weather. But Island Expeditions also does tours in the fall. They actually do stuff year round as well. Um, just know that the, the likelihood of, uh, of rain uh, goes up if you go in some of those uh, wetter seasons. Um, again, we were in March, right? So like there was a, we had that one day of sort of things kind of rolled 
rolled through. But again, the sun always came out. It was a more like a shower kind of thing. Um, there, you know, Island Expeditions is a great, safe, reliable, and respected uh, tour company, and they're also a good employer in the region. And so, I'd highly recommend them if you're considering a tour there. Um, I'll leave you with a couple more shots. Uh, this was an aerial view from Tobacco Cay, those overwater uh, cabins, and a sunset to die for, taking us back to Southwater Key, and of course, uh, hammocks at every turn. So if you want to be inspired by other adventures, I'd love you to sign up for my Carry On Queen monthly e-newsletter. Uh, you can do that by going to the website uh, or just send me an email, mary at carryonqueen.com, and I will get you signed up as well. I uh, just want to remind you yet again, pack light, experience more. Um, and yes, you can pretty much get by with a bikini and a sarong and a few of those additional things as well. Uh, there's my website, carryontween.com blog. Uh, you can read more about this adventure, as well as if you want to go into the detail around uh, things around uh, uh, Kay Cocker or the Blue Hole. Uh, if I've sort of uh, kind of tweaked your interest on that with those videos, you can see the full blog posts at, um, at the blog. So thank you for joining me on this adventure uh, and allowing me to relive this absolutely memorable trip. Uh, thanks again, and um, we'll look forward to a future presentation.